second, guys. Let me tell you what is going on with the Ella situation. Now, please stick with me here because this story does have a very good ending. So I'd like you to hear what transpired with all of this. And just want to tell you guys what was going on. Basically, guy looking at his phone, of course, veered over to my lane. Uh, basically, I got Ella. Love the dog. Still love her. And when I first got her, I, I showed a video out there. And I had a couple of guys that know dogs that was like, hey, that dog looks kind of scared. You know, and I said, okay, you know, but I, you know, she was new where she was at in that environment. And I hadn't, you know, uh, had her that long. And so when I first got her, she seemed like she, she was kind of skittish and kind of easily scared by things. I thought, well, that's because she's new to me. You know, I'm a six foot three big guy. And uh, there was a, f uh, a female that mainly took care of her before I got her. So I was like, you know, that's just the way things are. So as time went on, it didn't decrease, it started to increase. Like, let me give you some for instances. Uh, Ella would get scared of the crinkling of a water bottle if you picked it up and went to take a drink. She basically slept in my room uh, across from me. She had a bed on the floor. So I'd be in my bed and she'd be across from me where she could see me and she'd be on her bed. And if I would get up and wake up at night and the water bottle would crinkle, she would go to the foot of my bed back in the corner. She could get back into a corner and she would hide. Uh, then I noticed one day I was on, the, uh, she was sleeping in her bed. I was watching TV. I was talking to someone on speakerphone and I noticed that she got scared of the speakerphone just because she could hear the sound. It wasn't extremely loud, but she went and hid then. So I thought, well, you know, I just kept working with her and working with her. And I had her for two and a half months. Might not have seemed that long, but that's how long I had her, two and a half months. So one day I'm taking her out. And I'm getting ready to let her out the side door. And I open up the door that would go down to a landing, and then you go down to a basement. So she goes down to the landing. I go down to the landing with her. She's on a leash. And, you know, she would go out the side door once I open it. When I went to step down onto the landing, she kind of swung around and jumped around. And her tail went where my foot was going to land. So I stepped over her, which completely missed her. Didn't, didn't touch her. Everything was cool there. Didn't hurt her. I completely stepped over her. But when I did, I lost balance and bumped into the wall. Now, keep in mind, I never said one word. I won't do that to a dog, never got angry, never never did one thing, never even breathed differently. Just, I banged into the wall. She kind of like went to the ground and kind of rolled around on the ground, like rolled over, and then tried to go back up the stairs and pulled to go back in the house instead of outside that morning. Ever since that happened, uh, her fear just got increasingly more. Her skittishness, let's say. So after that, when she would be in my room, she would go hide the whole time. She wouldn't even use her bed. She would go to the foot of my bed and hide the entire time. So all night, it was like I didn't even have it. You wouldn't even know I had a dog in my room. Like she wouldn't come out so I could pet her. I could get her out a little bit and pet her. Now, keep in mind, granted, this went on for a week and a half. I tried to work with her. I'd go get on the floor and pet her, put her head on my lap. And I just, you know, I couldn't get her to work out of it. And uh, so that went on for about a week and a half, and she just did not seem happy. That was the main thing. Ella was not happy, and that was bothering me, okay? So it was just like all night, you wouldn't even know there was a dog in my room, basically. She would, she would stay in the corner all night until I took her out in the morning. So I talked with the breeder, I called him. And uh, he said, you know what, because we were going we to breed that dog on down the line and we were going to split the litter and, you know, things like that. And I thought that'd be fun and I was going to make money and things like that. He said, you know what, he said, honestly, he said, I, won't, he said, I would never breed that dog. He said, in fact, I'm glad I found this out because uh, that could be in her genetics, that skittishness. He said, it could be passed down. He said, I'm an ethical breeder. And he said, I would never do that. This guy's an awesome guy. His name's Whited K9. W-H-I-T-E-D, K-9. Look him up on Facebook. 
awesome guy. And so he said, I'll tell you what. He said, I'll completely take care of you with another dog. I have a couple options here that I think, and I think one would really be a good fit for you. But I got a couple different options here that's a young adult uh, that, is, that is trained in the house. You know, you have to get them acclimated, but they won't go to the bathroom in your house. You'll be cool, you know, to be good with that. And, you know, they've been in a, they've been in a home environment. And, uh, you know, I'll definitely take, fully take care of you. You got no, no issues. Then he said to me, and I'll tell you what, he said, if you want, you can keep Ella as well. He said, or <clears throat> if you want to place Ella somewhere in a home, if you want to find her a home, feel free to do that. I'm still going to take care of you and, and give you another dog, you know, for the, for the value that you paid for Ella. Cause I paid, I paid good money for Ella. So I let a couple of people know one woman I let know she, she's done work with rescue animals and stuff. And she got a hold of me later that day. She said, my dad had to put down a Rottweiler this last year, and he's got a small Australian Shepherd. He's a retired truck driver and uh, loves his dogs, treats them like babies. His wife lives there, she works, and he has a steps, or he has a stepson that lives there that's like 20. And the guy is retired and he's home all day, takes his dogs wherever he goes. And uh, I started to, I connected with this guy on Facebook and I started to get to see the things he's done. She told me that he used to train some dogs. He's had shepherds in the past. He knows how to train dogs and work with them. He's had problem dogs in the past. And this guy's house just looked amazing. I mean, it just really looked amazing. Like I wanted to go there and live. So I talked to the guy and he kind of, you know, laid it out, everything that he's done with dogs sent me pictures uh, just cool stuff I'll, I'll, I'll put in some pictures here guys he got his Rottweiler would stand up on its hind legs in the kitchen with its front paws down and and to get a treat and uh, there's another dog beside of it that he trained to do the same thing I'll insert that picture now and Basically, this house was about twice the size of mine and probably cost three times what my house cost. I'll put a picture of the house right now. And now I'll put a picture of some of the people, or some of the pictures of Ella with these people. She was so happy and she's sticking like glue to the woman that lives there. So let me go ahead and insert the pictures of her with the people now. And when I left that residence, I was completely 100% at ease with Ella being there. Um, I was so trusting of these people after I spent time in their home and with Ella. I was so trusting of these people that I would actually have let any of my dogs uh, be with them if I was like going on vacation or anything and they wanted to babysit a dog. I would have definitely 100% given them a dog to babysit and I never would have blinked. That's how much these people, I trusted them. They, they took me upstairs. They already had a bed for Ella. I said, Ella, get on your bed. I said, Ella, lay down. She laid down. The people were laughing. Uh, they have an acre of land out back. They got two poles, one at each end of the land. They got a cable running in between. They got a spring. That, they got a spring and a cable that comes down to connect to the dog. And she can run that whole land uh, without being loose. And he said he takes the dogs to the dog park every day. And he basically takes them wherever he goes. So when I left, Ella was actually, she just seemed happy. It almost seemed like she was smiling. Seems like that's what she wanted. So now into my situation. I went and met a dog through the breeder. Her name is Ziva, Z-I-V-A. She's another solid black female. She just turned four years old. So she is an adult dog, which is fine with me. And uh, I've had her for, this will be my third day. And everything is going amazingly well, amazingly well. Uh, she hasn't ate as much food as she should, but other than that, everything is going amazingly well. Take her everywhere in the car, 
uh, take her to play ball. I'm gonna put in a couple of videos for you guys and show you me working with Ziva. And this is only just 48 hours after I had her. So I'm gonna insert a couple video clips right now and let you see her and her chasing the ball. Uh, Ella had no ball drive at all. And if anybody knows anything about German Shepherds, which I'm not an expert, uh, a, having a ball drive or a drive for toys and different things is, is key to, to anything you can basically get a German Shepherd to do. It's key for them to have that drive. Ella definitely has that drive. She's got heart. She doesn't fear anything. Um, she's just, she's not scared. Big loud noises, bangs, she goes to where the noise is. She'll put her muzzle where the noise is. She's not scared, she doesn't run the other way. So let me go ahead and put in a couple videos, and maybe a couple of pictures of Ella, I mean of Ziva, my new dog, Z-I-V-A, and I will show you uh, Ziva right now. Good girl. Ready? Ready for get the ball? Ready to get the ball? Ready to get the ball? You ready? Here we go, let's go. Go girl, go girl, go girl. Yeah, drop it, Ziva. Ziva, drop it. <laughs> she dropped it. Go girl. Ziva, want to ball? Here. Want to ball? Here, Ziva. Get it. Watch this, Dad. Come, on. go girl. Go girl. Ziva, come here. Drop. Ziva, drop it. Ziva, drop. Sit. Sit. Ziva, sit. Down. Ziva, down. Ziva, down. Ziva, sit. Down. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Okay, up. Come on. Up. So there you go, guys. Let me know what you think of my new girl, Ziva. Okay. Awesome. Uh, she does have to get to the groomer. Uh, her hair was in some, she, she had been in out, she, even though she was raised in the house, she had been outside in a kennel, and she has knots, she has some knotting in her hair, and uh, her hair's got some naps in it, and she will uh, get those all taken care of at the groomer, and I've already taken her to Pet Supplies Plus, I gave her a bath when I first got her, she let me do all that, no problem, um, she's just a great, great girl, very nice. Uh, very, very watchful. Uh, takes, uh, watches everything. When I'm in the car, sticks her head out the window, watches every little movement there is. So let me know, guys, what you think of Ziva. And Ella's in a wonderful home. As soon as she bonds with the people, they told me they want me to come over anytime I want and visit with Ella and see how she's doing. So, guys, here's Ziva. And uh, let me know what you think. And I'll talk to you guys real soon. This is DOF and I am out.